You've been writing about the mass media for a good many years, and now you're an object of the mass oh. media. Uh, well, how, do, how has this changed your view of it, well, if, if I, at all? Well, let me instead explain why this has happened. Because, you see, suddenly, if you notice, the mood of North America has changed very drastically. Things like the safety car couldn't have happened ten years ago. Why is that? Now, it's because people have suddenly become obsessed with consequences of things. They used to be obsessed with mere products and packages and uh, launching these things out into markets and into the public. Now they've suddenly become concerned about what happens when these things go out on the highway. What happens when this kind of program gets on the air? What happens? They want safety air, safety cigarettes, safety cars, and safety programming. This need for safety is a sudden awareness that things have effects. Now my writing has for years been concerned with the effects of things, not their um, impact, but their consequences after impact. TV, unlike uh, the fantasy world, uh, the escape world of the movies, TV creates enormously serious and uh, realistic-minded sort of person, well, almost oriental in his inward uh, uh, meditativeness. I think This is the teenager of today. Yes, he's becoming almost oriental in his inwardness. He's so thoughtful and serious. Yeah, no, grim. Uh, whereas the, uh, the movie generations uh, of the 20s and 30s were uh, a coon-coated bunch of superficial types, had a good time, and uh, went to college, but not for knowledge and that sort of thing. Uh, all has changed. And changed because of television, because Very of much. Uh, television gave the old electric uh, circuitry uh, that is already here, gave it a huge extra push in this direction of involvement and inwardness. You see, the circuit uh, doesn't uh, simply push things out for inspection. It pushes you in to the circuit. It involves you. When you put a new medium into a play in a, in a given population, all their sensory life shifts a bit, sometimes shifts a lot. This changes their outlook, their attitudes, changes their feelings about studies, about school, about politics. Since TV, uh, both Canadian and British and American politics have cooled off almost to the point of rigor mortis. Our politics require uh, much more hotting up than the TV medium will give them. A TV is ideal, uh, you see, when you've got two experts like ourselves discussing TV. The, this is good TV because there's a process going on of mutual uh, challenge, discovery, and uh, processing. Now, TV is good for that, and same with ads. Uh, if the audience can become involved in the actual process of making the ad, then it's happy. It's like the old quiz shows. They were great TV because it gave the audience a role, something to do. They were horrified when they discovered they'd really been left out all the time because the shows are rigged. Now, the, this was a horrible uh, misunderstanding of TV on the part of the uh, programmers. But in the same way, most advertisers do not understand TV media. Do you know that uh, most people read ads about things they already own? They don't read things to buy them, but to feel reassured that they have already bought the right thing. In other words, they get huge information satisfaction from ads far more than they do from the product itself. This, the, uh, the sad, what we're advertising is heading is quite simply into a world where the ad will become a substitute for the product and all the satisfactions will be derived informationally from the ad and the product will be a, merely a number in some file somewhere. Instead of going out and buying a package book uh, of which there have been 5,000 copies printed, you will go to the telephone, describe your interests, your needs, your problems and say, I'm working now on the history of Egyptian arithmetic, I know a bit of Sanskrit, I, I am uh, I'm qualified in German, and uh, I am a, a good mathematician. They said, it'll be right over. And they at once Xerox, with the help of computers from the libraries of the world, all the latest material just for you personally, not as something to be put out on, a, on the bookshelf. They send you the package as a direct personal service. This is where we're heading under electronic information conditions. Products increasingly are becoming services. What kind of a world would you rather live in? Is there, is there a period in the past or a possible period no. in the future you'd rather be in? I'd, I'd rather be in any period at all as long as people are going to leave it alone for a while. Just let go. Just leave it now. But they're not going to, are they? <laughs> no. So the only alternative is to understand everything that's going on and then counter neutralize it as much as possible, turn off as many buttons as you can, 
uh, and uh, frustrate them as much as you can. I, I am uh, resolutely opposed to all innovation, all change, but I am determined to understand what's happening because I, I don't choose just to sit and let the juggernaut roll over me. Now, uh, this, uh, many people seem to think that if you talk about something recent, you're in favor of it. Uh, the exact opposite is true in my case. Anything I talk about is almost certainly to be something I'm resolutely against. And it seems to me the best way of opposing it is to understand it, and then you know where to turn off the button.